Number 14 then from the 2017 Mathematics and Mechanics up to Denmark this time for this question which seems to be about vector motions. A fishing boat A, might as well just draw this out then as we go along, leaves a harbour with a constant speed of 10 km per hour on a bearing of, well, bearing means I'll need north, so I'll set in my north. And we'll just put it at the origin then. On a bearing of 060 degrees, so it's heading off like this, where that angle 60 degrees, and its speed is 10 km per hour. I'll just tell you, they're all going to be in kilometres per hour. At the same time, another boat, and that was A, is 12 kilometres due east. So I'll just head off east here, and it's 12 kilometres, so I'll mark that in there, due east of A, moving with a constant speed of 10 root 3, so it's going a bit faster, going root 3 faster, on a bearing of 330, that means I'll need its north. So from its north, I'm going to go 330, which means it's heading, that's 30 degrees then, short of north at 10 root 3. Oh, so far so good. Right, what well, happens? One, describe how the vectors i and j, these vectors here, should be defined. Well, you've mentioned bearings, so I have to have north. They've mentioned that, but it's east, so it's going to be north and east. So obviously, i is going to be this. i is going to be, but they have to be unit vectors, because this part has to be the magnitude, so that just has to have a magnitude of 1, is a unit vector, whoops, is a unit vector, well, I say in the direction east, I think, yeah, we'll just say is a unit vector east, and j has to again be a unit vector, so the magnitude is the portion in front, and it was bearing, mentioned bearings, so north. And in fact, you get two marks there. One mark for saying they have to be unit vectors, and the other mark for using east and north. Show that the position of the boat A relative to the boat B, t hours after they start, or after A starts, can be written as this. And they're using that notation for the position vector of A relative to B, rather than sort of more usual R of A stroke B. No matter. Well, position, distance. If it was just rectilinear motion, you would use this to find the position of something. S would be ut plus a half at squared. But if it didn't start at an origin, it would be its starting position plus that. And if there's no acceleration, then that part's gone. So in terms of vectors, <clears throat> it would be the position vector would be the initial position vector plus the velocity vector times the time. So that's what we just have to do for each of them then. Because to get the position of A relative to B, you're actually looking for BA, which would be the position vector of A minus the position vector of B. Right, so we'll just start off one at a time. So what's the position vector of A? Well, what's its initial position? That's just zero. I could put a zero vector, just put a zero down, I think. Plus, now, its motion, its velocity, has got two components in the directions that I want. Inside, I'll just put a 30 degrees. It's got a horizontal component, so that's the component in the I direction. So that'll be 10 cos 30, so plus 10 cos 30, and that'll be multiplied by t to give the distance after the time t, lots of i, plus it's got a vertical component, which will be the sine of 30, plus 10 sine 30 times t, in the j direction, got a little bit crushed up there, should have started further over maybe, which means the position vector of A will be, well there was nothing there to begin with. So cos 30, that's root 3 upon 2, multiplying that by 10 makes it 5 root 3. That multiplied by t gives the distance in the i direction. Sine 30 is a half, so that's just 5t times j in that direction east. Now, there's two marks for this, one for RA and one for RB. They've done it in a slightly different order, but essentially that's it. There's going to be one mark for getting RA. Now, do the same with RB, then the other mark for RB. Now, RB has got an initial position. It's starting 12 along in the direction east. 
so it's got 12i to begin with. Then you've got the motion part, then you've got the velocity vector. But this velocity vector this time goes backwards and upwards. So it's going to be minus this part. Now if that's 30, that's 60. So it's minus 10 root 3 cos 60 degrees times t for the magnitude in the i direction. But then plus, there you go, 10 root 3 sine 60. times t for the magnitude of the velocity in the j direction. Tidy that up. So there's two lots of i here. Cos of 60 is a half, so that's 5 root 3. So you've got 12 minus 5 root 3 t. 12 minus 5 root 3 t in the i direction. Sine of 60 is root 3 upon 2, so it'll be 5 threes are 15. Plus 15 times t, j. So I'm putting those two down for the first two marks. There's the position vectors of those two boats at any given time. Now we just want what it's written as a, r, b, which will be r, a, minus r, b which will be just doing them component by component, the i components. So it's going to be this minus that. I'll just put in a big bracket. 5 root 3t minus 12 minus 5 root 3t. Lots of i. Plus, do it again. That's 5t, but I'll be taking away this one, which is 15t. Lots of j. So finally you're going to get hopefully the same thing as that. And it will be because you've got 5 plus another 5 root 3, which is 10 root 3 lots of t minus the 12 in the direction i, but minus 10 t in the direction j for the last mark. Part B then, find for how long the two boats will be within 7 kilometres of each other. Give your answer to the nearest minute, but these quantities are in hours. Well, if that's the vector for A relative to B, then the magnitude of that vector that takes you from B to A will be, give you the distance from B to A. So what is the magnitude of that? So the magnitude of A relative to b, I'll just leave it squared, will just be square the two components. So I'll just be 10 root 3t minus 12 squared plus, I suppose I could be rigorous and put negative 10t squared for all the difference it makes. Make it a mark just for doing that. Just tidy that lot up then. So what have you got? Squaring this, that'll be 300t squared minus twice the product, 240 root 3t, square the last, 144, plus 100t squared. Just add that lot up. So that's 400t squared minus 240 root 3t, plus 144 for the distance squared between them. I'll just put that down as distance now. S squared equals that. That doesn't quite get the mark yet, because what you want is this. You want that distance to be less than 7. Well, if that's the case, that means the distance squared has to be less than 49. So that's what I'm going to put down next. So that means that 400t squared minus 240 root 3t plus 144 has to be less than 49. That's worth a mark. So that means you've got an equation to solve, and an equation to solve. I'll bring that over. 400t squared minus 240 root 3t. And when you take the 49 across, that'll be plus just 95 is less than zero. That should really be the one there. So that's what you have to solve. Now, in order to solve that, because obviously there's an interval of time here, they're starting 12 apart, they'll get to 7, then they'll be within it for a while, and then they'll 
pass beyond and it will increase again, there's an interval of time they'll be within that. So what you want to do would be to find the limits of that. So the limits of that interval, I should say limits of the interval, but I can't be bothered. Limit would be 400 t squared minus 240 root 3 t plus 95 equals 0. So that's what needs to be solved. And that's just a quadratic equation. You may well have a calculator where you can just go to the function in it, in the equations part, and put in these three numbers and it'll give you the two answers. But, I'll just have to type all in, I suppose. You could knock them down a bit, but you're just going to be putting them into your calculator anyway. The amount of time it would take me to do that, would that justify the time it would save in pressing buttons? I don't know. They all divide by 5 anyway, so that's 80t squared. 5 into that is going to be 48 root 3t, and 5 into that will be 19. So I could solve that instead. Well, I'll just have this then. So what's t? It's going to be 48 root 3, negative of b, plus or minus the square root all over 2 times 80 of this 48 root 3 squared, minus 4 times 80 times 19. Now it's just press the buttons. So for the first of the answers, and of course that minus should give a positive amount, because they haven't yet, they're still too far apart. To save a bit of time, I just put 48 root 3 in, pressed equals, so I could just use answer, answer to save a bit of button pressing, don't know if it really did. First answer you get then is 0.339337 and so on hours. Then, going for the plus, 0 0.699892 and so on hours. So those are the limits of the interval, so it'll be between those two times. Now, there's a mark there. Missed out a mark, there was a mark, just for creating the quadratic equation by putting an equals in, so you could find the interval limit. Now we need to change those, so what if we go? T1 is going to be, that's in hours, I'll need to change it to minutes. So let's just multiply it by 60. Well that's the one that was still in the calculator, so put that one in first. That's 41.99 minutes. And this one is 20.36 minutes. So the interval of time will be the difference between them, T2 minus T1, which is 21.62 minutes, but it's said to the nearest minute, so 22 minutes for the last mark.